stand clear of the doors. Por favor, manténganse alejado de las puertas. To those guests who've just joined us, welcome. Our next stop is the Magic Kingdom. For those of you standing, please hold on to the handrails throughout our journey and stay clear of the door. Stay, 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 stay clear of the door. Ladies and gentlemen, we are approaching our station at the entrance to Main Street, USA. Welcome aboard the Monday Morning Monorail podcast. This is Justin Monorail, and it feels like episode 300, but it's only 214. It's episode 214 of the Monday Morning Monorail podcast. Today is August the 12th, 2024, and what an exciting weekend it has been for fans of Disney theme parks around the world. And we are particularly interested in all the things that we've learned about Walt Disney World. But before we dive into the D23 announcements, I've got to welcome in my co-host. So let's do that right now. And we are going to start with the birthday girl. It's Steffers. Happy birthday, Steffers. Thank you. Hello. Happy Monday, friends. My birthday was on Saturday. A lot of you wished me a happy birthday. That's really great. Um, I will say when we're recording this, I am half alive and half... I. I don't know. I think I'm a ghost right now, but that's okay. Lots of drinks were had, and I met We the Kings, and it was a quality, quality time. Made good choices, um, and uh, I don't. I think this is the last year I can I can really drink like I'm 21 because I I ain't got it in me anymore, guys. Well, <laughs> you, you're retired. You're retiring from alcohol. I don't, let's not go that far. I just mean like I'm not going to party like it's 1999. Well, I was four, so that wasn't even legal. Y'all know what I'm saying, okay? Okay. All right. It's a song. It's a song. It's a I song. think a lot of us have felt this way the day after a big night, so it's okay. I totally get it, Steffers. You'll bounce back, and I believe in you. But congratulations on a, another year, another trip around the sun. Thanks. And congratulations on being here with us. For another episode of the Monday Morning Monorail Podcast. Before we get into everything that we've got to talk to, we got to welcome in the man, the myth, the legend, the one who had some technology challenges but has overcome them and is an inspiration to us all. It's Landon the Dawes Doan. Landon, welcome to the Monorail. Yeah, I don't know if I'd go uh, that far, particularly on the uh, inspiration to us. Uh, hi, everybody. Coming to you from the Isolation Station of Love. It's me. It's me. It's the DOZ. Landon the Dawes Doan. And, uh, it's a Monday morning. You know what that means. And uh, it's been a challenging uh, Sunday afternoon. Boy, let me tell you, when Jay says it feels like episode 300, particularly for your boy, the Dawes over here. Holy guacamole <laughs> and uh, steppers. Uh, this one's for you. Uh, hallelujah. Holy spit. Where's the Tylenol? Um, um, <laughs> God bless y'all. Uh, technology. Uh, the best of times and the blurst of times. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> We have a love-hate relationship with technology here on the monorail. We are still going to be able to produce a video today, but not quite the same way we thought we were going to. Nope. But Steffers has come through in the clutch. She's hooking us up, and uh, we're going to make it happen. Per but, usual, uh, Steffers is the uh, MVP of the monorail. It's true. Yep. I mean, we're lucky we have a Steffers because Landon, I think you and I would be lost, lost in the uh, woods. If, uh, if if we didn't have a Steffers, uh, not only would be lo uh, we be lost in the woods, uh, my laptop would currently also be in the woods because uh, <laughs> I know we're uh, wrapping up the Olympics uh, as we're recording this. Uh, I think I would be recreating some discus throw with my laptop. <laughs> right. Oh. It's a world record laptop throw. Uh -huh, yeah, Bring uh -huh. home another gold. Oh, it would be going gold in uh, technology toss. Let's just say that. <laughs> oh, well, the Olympics are wrapping up. Have you all watched a lot of the Olympics or no? I, no. 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 Um, I, I, I thought I'd watch more. Um, but honestly, the most I watched was uh, was the uh, opening ceremonies when the 
minions quote unquote stole the uh uh mona lisa from the uh lou or the louvre uh depending on how you're uh, uh where you're from you might pronounce it that way and also that uh that gojira uh performance was metal af as the kids say uh but other than that I haven't really watched a lot yeah i've watched more than i expected to honestly but it's been the big sports i've watched basketball i've watched some soccer i did squeeze in a little table tennis because that's it just blows my mind how fast those people are no no like, that's ping pong ping pang their their reflexes are are very impressive to me um but yeah i've seen some highlights here and there we watched of course we watched some gymnastics uh simone biles the goat you gotta goat. watch simone biles um it's been she really good jump like 12 feet yeah she like just straight in the also i saw on twitter uh one simone biles jump is 12 feet that equals roughly 8.3 corgis if you stack them on top of each other of course, I saw that on Twitter, so I don't know if that's true or not. But again, it's on Twitter, so it must be true. It's a fun fact. Mm -hmm. I like that. Let's. We should start measuring everyone's jump height in corgis. Mm -hmm. I, I'm okay with that switch. Cor <laughs> corgis are cute. They are cute. Mm -hmm. We're all at like a solid one corgi. I don't really know. Me? <laughs> oh, I got two corgis in me. I'll tell you that. I, get, I can right. jump. Sure, sure you can. You got the hops? I, I got some hops. My basketball no, background strengthened my legs. He no, does have a uh, basketball background. And also with what he's wearing right now, that probably gives him a solid two and a half corgis. That's so. true. I don't know how this is going to translate today, but I promised I was going to wear it. For those of you who are in the Discord, you may have heard a little bit about this because I did tease that uh, I was going to be bringing home this flappy boy. Flappy That's what it's called. Boy. Uh, yeah, Casey and I went to a Rays baseball game on Friday, and the main reason we went, if if you're if you know MLB games or even minor league games, a lot of times one of the ways they try to get fans to come to the games is they'll do giveaways, like free giveaways for the first however many fans. Usually, it's like a bobblehead. Sometimes it's a cool hat. You know, sometimes it's you know who knows, like a a t shirt, a t shirt, mm -hmm. right? Well, in this case, it was a hooded sweatshirt called the Flappy Boy. And the reason it's called Flappy Boy is because, ladies and gentlemen, it's a stingray and it does have wings. I'm going to stand up right now for the video so you can see these wings. Look oh. at them. Wait. Wow, they, they kind of get lost in the crisp. No, no, no. No, no, no. It doesn't get lost. You can see. He, yep. You <laughs> see them flaps. You got to look at the... I'm going to take my headphones off so you can see the face. Hold on. Here comes oh. the face. Yeah, the hood has a face, ladies and gentlemen. And not only does it have a face, it has, it has a Tampa Bay Braves hat on it. Oh, it's adorable. All oh, praise be to the Flappy Boy. It's Flappy Boy. Flappy Listen, Boy. When it's like the week of Halloween and you just don't know what to do, yeah. you just throw on your Flappy Boy and you <laughs> flap, flap away. Or, or you contribute to the lore and you wear it to mickey's not so scary halloween party and just oh, yeah you can pretend you're moana's grandma but oh, oh. as a tampa bay fan absolutely yes. yeah so now landon i was telling you about this this week and i i mentioned you know this is something we've been looking forward to we're gonna get there early because both of us want to get this flappy boy hoodie and we were you so had excited. to be one of the first twelve thousand people inside the park to get a flappy boy right people. it's true yeah and we were fired up we we you know we planned our whole week around just looking forward to getting this flappy boy and as it turned out we left later than we wanted to um and uh we you know we we always of course both of us had to work we had to wrap up work and work you know goes longer than you expect sometimes so we get over to the Rays game and unfortunately we arrived in the middle of the second inning oh no uh -huh. And right. And so I, I told Casey on the way to the baseball stadium, I was like, I think we need to get it in our heads. We're not getting a flappy boy. Like we need to go ahead and, and understand that's probably going to be the case. And that way we won't be disappointed. Like we're going to go have a good time. We're going to have some hot dogs. We're going to have some beer. And we're going to catch a home run or two and it'll be great. And she was like, no, I'm not doing that. I don't have that defeatist. <laughs> I don't have that defeatist attitude. She's like, I've been looking forward to this for months. We're getting the flappy boy. So we get to the stadium. Determination. We go through security, walk into the stadium. There's no flappy boys to be found. We checked a couple of the other gates because, you know, sometimes if you walk around the stadium, the other gates still have some when, when like, the main gate runs out of the giveaway, right? Mm -hmm. 
no Flappy Boys to be found. We, of course, we ask someone, they're like, yeah, it, it, you know, it was limited. It was just for the first 12,000. We don't have any more of them. So Casey's heart is broken, like almost Aww. in tears. I'm trying to keep the spirit up. I'm like, it's all good. Everything's fine. We're going to be all right. We got our food. We got our beers. Had a nice time. But here we are. I, I get the. <laughs> They have this, uh, I think, I can't remember if it's called, it's pig and something, pig and whistle. I don't know what it's called. Pig whistle, I think is bourbon. Um, but it is. Yeah. But there was, there's a, there's a stand uh, in center field where they sell uh, barbecue covered like French fries with like bacon, cheese, all this. So I got like Ooh. a big, a big mess of those. That's Casey got a pretzel wrapped dog. Like it was way too much food. We go to our seats. We're sitting there enjoying the food. And you know how like between innings, the players will keep themselves loose by tossing a ball around oh, yeah. to each other. And then when they're done, a lot of times, like the whoever ends up with the ball, one of the outfielders will look to the crowd and be like, hey, who wants a ball? And then they throw it to the fans. So I had put the food down between my feet. We were both done eating. And I'm holding I'm holding my oh, beer. Oh, no. I'm oh. holding my beer and I'm holding a phone. and Because I was about to text. I think I was sending you the picture, Landon, of Santander, who was out in the outfield. Because um, I had taken it and I was trying to send it to you. Well, the Rays were coming out in the outfield, right? So DeLuca, the Rays right fielder, holds the ball up. He's like, hey, what's the ball? So he tosses it. Now, I'm watching the ball's trajectory, and I'm like, that's not coming to us. I'm not worried about it. It looked like it was going to be close, but it was going kind of to the right and a little bit below us. Well, people converged on where the ball was coming to. They all run into each other. The ball smacks <laughs> off of all their stupid hands and flies right up to me. And where does it land? Between my feet. Oh, no. Smashed into the hot dog, smashed into the barbecue fries. Food is exploded. Oh. Everywhere. And when I realize what's happening, because I'm kind of frozen, like I didn't expect that to happen. And I was like, oh, my God, the ball is between my feet. I go to look down and grab it. It had leaped out to the side. There was an empty seat beside me, and then there was another guy. It was headed towards him. I was like, no. And I reached. He reached down and snagged it before I could get it. Oh. And I was thinking, well, surely he saw that came to me and it was between my feet and destroyed my food. So no. certainly he's going to be like, I mean, this ball is yours, right? No. Nope. He he held it oh. up, looked at it, showed it to me like, ha ha. That's just <laughs> What a jerk. That's dirty pool, sir. Dirty pool, I say. Yeah. And I was like, <laughs> I kind of, I know I had a shocked look on my face, but here we are. Food destroyed. No flappy boys. No ball, <laughs> no positivity, no hope, <laughs> no dreams. Our pets' heads are falling off. Casey's like, we're never coming back to a Rays game. I want to leave. I don't want to be here anymore. Valid, Casey. Valid. I get that. I get that. So we actually did leave a little bit early because the Rays were losing four to nothing. They weren't. They, they looked. They looked like crap. It was like whatever. And we went over to Ferg's, which is the bar. It's like a huge sports bar right across the street from the stadium. If you've never been to Ferg's, and I'm sure most of you haven't, it's actually very cool. They have a huge outdoor space with like four bars, four separate bars. They have an indoor bar. There's like different patios, different levels, and they have a live band stage. And there was a band playing. And when we got there, they were playing the power of love. And I was like, oh, it was meant to be like, this mm. is, this is, this is calming the soul. Um, so we sit down at the bar. There were Orioles fans that were standing behind us, a couple of older dudes, and they both had flappy boys. One of them sits it down on the bar, and it's right beside Casey. And so it's almost touching her arm. No, no, no. Mm. So no, 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 Casey. She's, she's sitting there looking at me, and she's like, they're taunting me with this. This is I, I can't believe this is happening. And that guy was like walking around the bar, exploring the place, just leaving the flappy boy right there unattended. No. And I know no. what she was thinking. She's like, I'm going to snatch and grab this thing. I'm going to run. <laughs> I was like, don't do it. You know, I was like, you are just a, as much of a klutz as I am. You're going to grab it and you will fall on your face. And then you're just going to have to like hand it to the guy and be like, yeah, I tried. You got me. <laughs> We're about to get tossed out of a Ferg over Flappy Boys. Yeah. So anyway, she's sitting there moping. She's like, I got to go to the bathroom. So she leaves. The guy comes up to get another drink. And, and I was like, hey, and he was on the other side of me. The, the, the Flappy Boys on my left. He's on my right. And I was like, hey, is this is this your flappy boy? <laughs> Jay, hold on. Before you go further, did you ever in your life think you would say to another grown man, hey, is this your flappy boy? No, I didn't. I didn't. <laughs> okay. All right. Please proceed. And he says, he's like, yeah, can you pass that down to me? I was like, wait, before I do, my girlfriend would kill me if I didn't say this. 
is there any amount of money you would accept for this flappy boy? <laughs> and he just laughed and he was like, you know what? You can have it. And I was like, what? And I was like, that's amazing. And I like, I fist bumped him. I high fived him. Like, I bought him like please, five drinks. Please tell dude. me you bought his next drink. Well, he had like, he, pur he purchased his drink and then he was gone. Um, okay. I would have, I absolutely would have. But like, so Casey comes back from the bar and I'm holding the flappy boy and I'm like, <laughs> yeah, guess what? She cried. She was so excited. <laughs> <laughs> so we salvaged the night. I have a flappy boy. Thanks to some Baltimore Orioles fan who had a kind heart and decided to. Yeah. So we have to share it. Yeah. Joint joint custody of the flappy boy because there's only one, but yeah. But we did we ended up with one. So the weekend turned around. It ended up okay. <laughs> wow. Yeah. So pretty good origin story of the flappy boy, right? Not bad. Yeah, that's that's much better than just walking through a turnstile and a worker at a raise game gives you one. Yeah. yeah. Honestly, I was hoping she would have grabbed it and <laughs> <laughs> I know uh, yeah. she was thinking about it. I know she thought about it. So then she stole it and tripped over five bar stools on the way out and then fell through a plate glass window, but we got it. <laughs> while while the while the band in the bar was playing Give Me Three Steps. Like <laughs> <laughs> that would have been so iconic. <laughs> oh. yeah, she's currently in the ICU, but the important thing is we got our flappy boy. <laughs> yeah, that's right. So that was exciting, but it wasn't the end to the excitement for this weekend because, ladies and gentlemen, we've got so much D23 to talk about. And in order to do that, we've got to dive into the news. Ah! That's right, dreamers. We're back. And we didn't have to scour the internet this week. We just no. tuned in and we watched all the social media explode as the Walt Disney World and really Disney Parks globally had uh, all of the deluge of exciting announcements. Not just the parks, but the cruise line. Four new ships. Four new ships for the cruise okay, line. Okay, wait. That's Don't downplay. Many. There was also some entertainment news, but we're not talking about that today. There was entertainment news. Was there. Like a lot, like 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 yeah. Deadpool kept coming out. It's like yep. All right, I have it. to, <laughs> I have to say though, Dead uh, Ryan Reynolds was iconic because he not only thanked Kevin Feige for like letting him roll with all the jokes, but then he said, "I'm doing this out of like the love of my heart or whatever." And then he was like, "Also to save the studio," and I thought that was the most savage, <laughs> hilarious <laughs> moment. In all of in all of the show. Oh yeah, I actually say that Deadpool just hosts D twenty three going forward. That would be great. Yeah, yeah. like like Josh tomorrow, sit 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 your butt down. No, like, like, hold like, on. Deadpool no, no, no. has this. <laughs> oh, we got to get Daddy tomorrow sit. out there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, of course, so. there it is. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but oh man, man. So if you, I don't, I can't, I would not understand how this would be possible but i guess it's possible you could be listening to this show you're a fan of the parks and you don't know what d23 is d23 is the uh, fan club essentially for the disney company and the the 23 represents the year the studio was established the disney studio and every year they do this big convention and it's not just about the parks it's about all their entertainment the you know anything that's going to be going on that's disney related they and they they hold showcases they do announcements they do all sorts of things they celebrate you know their imagineers and and all the people that work on their stuff but all our eyes of course and i'm talking about the monorail eyes are always tuned in to the parks panel uh this year they called it horizons and um as we were leading up to this date you know we were interacting with the monorail family and we were talking about like what are your hopes? What do you want to hear announced at D23? One of the things that we heard from multiple people, and Landon, you were the first to say it, was no blue sky. Yep. No blue sky. No more we're blue done, sky, y'all. We're done with that. And I am pleased to announce that Josh Demario pretty much kicked off the, the whole panel <laughs> by saying, this isn't blue sky. And 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 this confirms that Josh Demario definitely listens to the monorail. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, so this year they usually do this at the Anaheim Convention Center. This year they did this uh, showcase at the Honda Center in Anaheim. It has a capacity of like 12,000 people. 
I the videos and the pictures I saw of that of the space where they were doing the the Horizons presentation, it was packed. It was it looked like mm-hmm. the biggest concert you've ever seen. Like, and people were fired up uh, to be there. And yeah, Josh tomorrow. This was the quote he says: "As we sit here together at the Honda Center, we have Imagineers hard at work." He said this while the crowd is, of course, going crazy. Everything we have to share with you is in active development. This means dirt is moving. This isn't blue sky. So that's a way to kick things off for sure. And uh, that that kind of set the tone for how this was going to go. And and all of us, I think we all had blue sky fatigue. We were done with the blue sky because we've heard so much over the last several years that's blue sky. Give us like the real stuff, mm-hmm. you know, and that's and that's really what we got here. Well, so, also... It was like no blue sky, but like also what are you, what essentially what it, what are they going to do to kind of you know Universal has Epic Universe coming like what solid plans are they doing for their parks knowing they have to kind of give something yeah not mm-hmm. imaginative right so, yeah exactly we need some real plans and we'll talk about it as we go. I don't know mm-hmm. necessarily that this is a response to Epic, but no. it's it's definitely these are going to be attendance drivers. Yeah, yes. oh, most definitely. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. They 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 didn't announce a fifth gate. It's like, oh yeah, well, it's like we have Epic Ur Kingdom. It's right. Like, <laughs> nothing like that. But <laughs> but to Jay's point, most definitely, this is going to get people into the parks. Yeah. Particularly mm-hmm. we don't have Epic Ur <laughs> Kingdom, but but something that was announced in Magic Kingdom, I think right. is definitely going to get people in there. That's right. We're gonna go in reverse order of the like the when the parks opened. I think that's that makes sense. Plus I think what we have at Animal Kingdom, uh, we pretty much knew most of this stuff already. We're just getting some details. With so, a caveat, yeah. I'm yeah, agreeing. yeah. So, and if you're watching us on YouTube, which I hope you are, because now we're sharing our video on YouTube. I'm going to share Especially after pictures. all the links of trouble we went through today to get the video up. And as you say that, uh, my screen goes black. Awesome. <laughs> so, well, I'm hoping that others who are watching are going to be able to see the uh what we're sharing here on the screen we're going to share the concerts concept art and uh different pictures of things that we're talking about um landon hopefully when i stop sharing you'll come back <laughs> <laughs> at least can you hear us yes i can hear. okay all right great we're well, doing great is, we're doing it's going great. great y'all it's going great yeah um, and by the way, I, I want to take turns like going through this stuff. So I I will I'll be happy to talk about uh, Animal Kingdom, and then um, Landon, you can take Hollywood Studios. Steffers take Epcot, and Landon, I want you to do Magic Kingdom because I want you to bring the gravitas and right. the excitement. Um, so Animal Kingdom, we've got Tropical Americas. Now we knew this expansion is is basically coming in to take over the space previously occupied by Dino Land USA. And the idea is it's representing another part of the country that wasn't really represented in Animal Kingdom as it was. And they're going to do that and use some of their IPs that kind of fit into that space, um, particularly focusing on two big things, which are Encanto and then Indiana Jones. Indiana Jones, I don't really think is supposed to be considered to be part of Tropical Americas, but it is like right there because where that attraction will be is is where dinosaur is today which it is sort of like it almost has a separate entrance to you know aside from dino land but it's connected so i think it's all connected um but here's what we learned so in this land tropical americas we're going to be immersed in a vibrant world of south america with exciting attractions lush landscapes and authentic experiences guests will enter the land through pueblo esperanza a fictional village in the heart of the rainforest that will feel lived in with a long, rich history. The land will also feature a new attraction based on one of Disney's most popular franchises, Encanto. I don't. I love Encanto. I don't know if I'd call it it's one of its most popular franchises. Um, the experience, which is the first ride-through att- attraction for the film in a Disney park, take place inside Casita on the day after young Antonio receives his gift for communicating with animals. So it's it's a dark ride, which is I, th- I think that's what we were hoping for. Animal Kingdom really yeah. needed like a nice dark ride. I don't think. Yeah, let me think. Well, we only have. Uh, I don't know if they would consider that a dark ride, but and uh, Navi River Journey, it's like the slowest. Yeah, you know, slow vibes, it's, but like there's nothing. That's fair. That's a that's not. a dark ride, but it's it's a boat ride. You know. Yeah. So this will be. I I don't believe that there's any 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 case or any indication this is going to be a boat ride so i don't know if that would make 
sense. I think it I think it only makes sense to be like a some sort of I don't want to say buggy, but you know what yeah, I'm trying to an say. An omni mover. Yeah. Um thank you. Yeah. Words are hard. <laughs> they can be so. sometimes. But yeah, yeah. omni mover for sure. And I when I think about Animal Kingdom, that's that's great because it's gonna be another ride that kids are gonna be able to enjoy, especially as you as you start to replace Dino Land, which was mainly a, an area for kids then you got to think about adding more capacity for kids who, so they can do some things. Um, so that's really exciting. There's also, and I didn't know this was, I mean, I think, I guess I just forgot about the carousel, um, but there's going to be a carousel in this area that features wood carved animals from classic Disney stories. Um, yep. And Steffers, you've shared, uh, I know. An, I'm going to click on it so we can see it. Okay. Oh, that's the dark ride. I forgot to see. I totally got lost. If you're if you're seeing oh, this now, here's the dark room. The vehicle was in there. That's good to know. Yeah, so you get to see okay. a little bit of what the ride vehicle looks like. I, I, what I'm interested in is if they're going to make it more of like a Mickey and Minnie's like esque. Oh, like a trackless? immersive. Well, it doesn't necessarily have to be trackless, but kind of. I just feel like are we going to update? the the technology or are we kind of just gonna do og style track and yeah i don't know i think it could you work know, either way i'll tell I mean, you soon it will be trackless i mean like like you think going so? forward i think most disney rides similar to what i think we're going to get for the encanto ride will be trackless yeah i mean i'll be happy either way I, i'll tell you this if it were up to me I would love it to be a track just like the Haunted Mansion track where you've got your little car of your people, like, you know, your family, two, three, four, five, whatever it may be, or, you know, um, and then like your individual car is actually separate and moves independently of the other ones. In the picture, as you can see, it looks like two rows in each car, but you can't really tell if it's, is it a train right. or that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can't yeah. really tell. So we'll find out yeah. more, more to come on that one. But yeah, that's the, super super exciting. The next slide is the overall concept oh, here's the model. Yeah. yeah it's it's going to be so cool. If you're watching this on YouTube, you can see this. If not, we're showing just uh, pictures and concept art for the st different announcements. I think this, remember when we first started talking about this and we were worried about like the size, is it going to feel too cramped? Is it going to feel X, Y, Z? Mm -hmm. I want, I, my first inkling is I think it's going to be, obviously, this is not as big. This is not, like, take this with a grain of sephir salt. But, like, you know how Spaceship Earth, like, you they utilize that space. I, I feel the like ride. they're going, yeah. yeah, I think this could be, like, the same quote-unquote concept in terms of, if they run out of space. Obviously, it, it this is, be. like, a tiny model. But, like, you know. It could be. They, they might end up doing something similar to Haunted Mansion where you enter through the casita, but it's really just the facade. And then once you're in the ride, it goes sort of in its own little oh, show that's building. Also point. That's also a good point. Never mind. Maybe that's probably so, more likely than well, what I just said. I mean, I would love it for it to be huge, but mm -hmm. also true. <laughs> um, I mean, and then the like, next just, one. Just is, just as an Encanto band, like like the fact that they're going to build casita and it, it's just like, I just I just want to see that and the fact that there's going to be an attraction attached to it. So cool. So yeah, very, very exciting. Yeah. So this picture that we're showing now is actually Kevin carved out of wood. So I'm guessing this is what the individual ride vehicles or your individual seat on the carousel are going to look like. Is mm -hmm. that what I'm understanding? Uh, uh, yes, it was an example of what the the. Yes, yeah. it's an example of what it's going to look like. You would call them horses on a traditional carousel. Uh, my brain couldn't brain. I'm like, ah, mm, the things that you, the things, <laughs> the things, the things. Um, but again, I, I, for, I forgot about the carousel. I'm, I'm excited. I didn't. I don't know if I even really remembered that. That maybe I blocked that out. <laughs> I like the honest. style they're going with, though. Yeah, yeah, it looks really good. It looks like a, it looks handmade, and <laughs> it looks, it looks aged. Yep. Um. So I'm, I I can't wait to see that once it's once it's all done, um and then tangentially related to Tropical Americas, 
We are getting the Indiana Jones ride that we thought we were getting. It's going to go in the dinosaur building. But Disney's like, wait, wait, wait. You've all been saying you're just going to get a copy and paste of the Indiana Jones ride in Disneyland. Not so fast, my friend. It's almost college football season. (laughs) An all-new Indiana Jones attraction is coming to Disney's Animal Kingdom in 2027. This new adventure will be unlike any other Indiana Jones experience found at any other Disney park. The story follows Indiana Jones as he discovers a perfectly preserved Mayan temple. Intrigued by rumors of a mythical creature residing deep within, he embarks on an exploration, and guests will join him on the thrilling journey. So, they still don't have to change the track, really, but I guess that you can do whatever you want with the story that you tell along the way and the set design and all that. So, I'm excited, and I do think that this ride's going to have updated technology in it, as compared to the Disneyland in in uh, mm-hmm. the Disneyland version of Indiana Jones, so most definitely, yeah, yeah. And now on the YouTube video, we're showing this concept art. It's hard to, it's a little blurry. It's hard to see, but you've got Indy holding a torch, standing in front of a large idol that seems to be radiating green energy. Um, I'm pretty excited. I mean, I love Indiana Jones, so I'm down for this. I'm I'm gonna miss Dinosaur, but like, if you had to replace it, I'm okay with this. You know. <laughs> Yeah, I I most definitely view this as an upgrade over what we have with Dinosaur, because as we talked about on this podcast in previous episodes, uh, Dinosaur is starting to show its age. And depending on when you ride it, there are some animatronics that are in various states of uh, disrepair slash straight up not working. So I, I am excited uh, that this is coming. And the fact that it isn't just a, as you said, copy paste of what we have on the left coast, this is going to be a new attraction featuring Indy. I'm, I'm excited for this. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I can't wait. And all this, the tropical America is set to open in 2027. Um, I don't know, you know, I, I guess it's possible that, you know, the carousel or something could open in 26 or maybe pieces of it, but I guess it'll be ready for its grand unveiling in 27. So, so three years out, hopefully it'll be like spring of 27, not, <laughs> they won't do something like late 2027 and then it's in December. Right. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, but anyway, a very exciting stuff, a huge upgrade in my opinion to Dino land and um, really looking forward to that. And speaking of upgrades, They're also upgrading a 3D show that currently exists in Disney's Animal Kingdom. Underneath the Tree of Life, today, you could go watch It's Tough to Be a Bug, which is based on Bug's Life. That show is going to be replaced. I don't know if this is the first time Disney officially announced that it's going to be a Zootopia show, but we all I feel like we all knew it. We knew that was happening, and surely that came from, at some point, it was mentioned by someone at Disney. So a new Zootopia show called Better Together is coming to Discovery Island in the winter of 25. This will replace It's Tough to Be a Bug, and um, hopefully it will not be as terrifying at parts as that show was <laughs> to to some people. I mean, honestly, even adults, because when you got Black Widow spiders dropping down in your face and then you get stung by wasps, like, yep. you know, mm-hmm. there's opportunity to make it a little more kid-friendly. We can We can say that. I'm not going to say that that was the birthplace of my fear of creepy crawlies, flies, and stingies. However, I'm not going to deny that that was not the case either. Yeah, so. it, it could have been. Could've I been. don't know, Jay. Dealing with the police is kind of terrifying in its own right. So, you know, there's that. I, well, <laughs> you're you're not wrong. You're not wrong, Landon. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, so exciting stuff. I. I'll tell you this, I, and I think we should do this as we kind of go park to park. Was there anything that you were surprised was omitted from announcements at Animal Kingdom? They I didn't have... announce that they were going to fix the yet. No, no, I, I, I was not expecting that. I just want to click. That was a joke. Um, And Deadpool made that joke uh, about not fixing the Yeti. Um, when it comes to Animal Kingdom, no, not really. Um, But again, they made a, a lot of announcements that we kind of were expecting or were previously. Yeah rumored slashed announced so i mean not nothing unexpected or nothing left on the table so to speak when it came to animal kingdom the the only thing for me steffers what about you is there anything that you thought we might hear about um not necessarily in terms not necessarily i think 
The timeline also doesn't surprise me, but I think that was the part that I was kind of um not not I just surprised about kind of like it's not like it's a long timeline, it's not a short timeline. I guess in my brain I don't know what year it is and I'm just like, "Oh, <laughs> 2027." Um I I will say a lot of these announcements are quote unquote solid i and i'm glad that he said that that was an act of development i feel like if he just said we're planning to do this gave a year and then no dirt was actually moving i it would have just i'm glad he gave like a yeah some sort of time yes. i think that would have been but no i don't think i'm too at least for animal kingdom i'm not okay my my only thought was, of course, at Disneyland, they announced so much stuff for Avatar, and we knew that they were going to. Mm -hmm. I kind of thought we might get a little, maybe even a little teaser that they're going to add something to Avatar. I've always heard that there's still an expansion area that they can use in Pandora, and that the plan is to eventually add another attraction there. But maybe, you know, now is not the time because they're doing the big overhaul for Dino Land, so they'll save that for the next Maybe in the next two years, we'll hear something there. But that was the only thing that... Honestly, was... they might be saving that for the next Avatar movie whenever that's supposed to drop. Yeah, that's true, too. So it still, it still could come, just it wasn't time for it yet. All right. So let's go over to Hollywood Studios, land and take it away. All right. Um, uh, Josh Tomorrow kicked off the Hollywood Studio announcements, or I guess the big announcement is going to be, we are getting a Monsters, Inc. La La or, uh, Monsters, Inc. land. Uh, step into the world of Monstropolis. Uh, the land will welcome guests to tour the Laugh Factory with an amazing new attraction that will be the first suspended coaster ever at a Disney park. Quote, the first time I saw Monsters, Inc., all I wanted to do was ride on one of those doors like Mike and Sully. DeMauro told the crowd, you will go into the factory and experience the first suspended coaster ever in a Disney park. Remember in the movies how those claws grabbed the doors and hoisted them into the air to take them away? We are going to do that too. And you're going to go along for the ride, Demaro told that crowd. Um, we're showing some concept art of what the uh, I um, uh, what Laugh Factory Monstropolis is going to look like. Uh, if you've seen particularly the first Monsters Inc. movie, you know exactly what it looks like. Uh, of course, this is concept art, so concept art to actual what happens in real life can change. Um, I think this sounds really exciting because yeah. uh, Demaro, to his point, in that movie, uh, them flying on those doors and riding on those doors definitely lends itself to an attraction. So I'm excited to see what the Imagineers have to uh, show us, so to speak, when it comes to this attraction. Though I do want to point out, going back to the concept art, uh, I'm sure you've seen it on social. If you're watching on the YouTube, we have the concept art up. Uh, the concept art has a lot of people who uh, hashtag save the Muppets a little bit up in arms, maybe flailing like Kermit does, um, uh, particularly with the placement saying it looks uh, similar to where Muppet Vision is. Mm -hmm. They did not specify where this attraction is going in Hollywood studios. I'm not going to go as far as saying this is going where Muppet Vision is, but I will say there is a lot of real estate in that area. Guys, do we have any cause for concern here? Yes, we do. I was holding some hope in my heart that this was going to be the overhaul of the animation courtyard, and maybe, you know, they'd finally get rid of Star Wars Launch Bay, because... There are actually like offices and studios back behind there. And then there's a parking lot and it would put it closer to Toy Story Land. In fact, if they wanted to, if they were redoing that area, you could almost make a walking path between Monstropolis and Toy Story Land. If that you did, sense. Yeah. if you did that, Keep which would Pixar make sense. Realm. Mm -hmm. So that was the hope I was holding in my heart. And I was also thinking, well, Muppet Vision doesn't even have that much, not that much space compared to like Animation Courtyard. And then I looked at it and I was like, well... If they're willing to tear up parking lot and like reroute some of the traffic and things like that, they could absolutely do it on the Muppet Vision side too. So, yeah, I think I think we do need to be worried that this is something that could happen and and replace the Muppets. I I 
I'm going to hold it out, hold out hope in my heart. Because right now, Muppet Vision, Pizza Rizzo, Mama Melrose, like all that space over there, I'm going to say they're going to wait to see if they need to expand Star Wars land, and they're going to hold that yeah. for mm-hmm. that. That and then, right there, that right there. And then the the animation courtyard is much more likely to get this. That's what I'm, that's my fingers crossed, saying a prayer, I'm going to hope and pray. And thematically, it makes more sense to put it there in in the yeah. animation courtyard. I mean, it's it's right down the street from Toy Story Land. You want to, mm-hmm. quote unquote, keep it in the family and in, in, in the Pixar realm. But yeah. uh, OK. All right. We we we've speculated about location and 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 could it replace the Muppets? Let's talk about the attraction itself. This is a big deal. This is the first ever suspended coaster in a Disney park. I think this is an awesome announcement, and the theming is top notch on it as well. It is. Yeah. Go to the next slide. Oh, whoops. There you go. No. I jumped one too far. Sorry, Steppers. Uh-huh. It's okay. Um, I it's giving. Fun and exciting. I also, going back to the location, I stalked the internet because everything on the internet is correct. (laughs) And according to the internet, someone at D23 spoke to an Imagineer who doesn't even know where where it's going. So then the person said, the Muppets mean a lot to people. So which the, the Imagineer said, well, I'll say this, it will take up a lot of space. So I don't, I don't think that that i mean i think it'll be fine i think i don't know why they would fix it to then tear it down to me that doesn't really make sense but but the the ride vehicle looks so cool i mean suspended coasters are great um Uh i'm excited it looks like it's going to be thrilling even though the theme is like appealing to kids i think this is going to be one of those like medium thrill coasters um just based on the looks of the art i want to say it's a little weird though because you know We've already got a roller coaster themed after Aerosmith, and now we're going to have one themed after the doors. I'm confused. Uh, I don't. I'm not even entertaining that. The Landon's laughing for all of us. Uh, my uh, concern. Is, is well done, is Papa Monorail. Well done. <laughs> two people per row. Yeah. I don't. That gives me pause. Oh wow. With the amount of people that i know like i don't know that's that's what's going to give me pause so either there's going to be a really quick ride with quick turnaround yeah or you're just thinking about capacity is, yeah i'm yeah mm-hmm. sorry i'm long i'm thinking about this multi-lane fat fast pass standby snack break mm-hmm. situation in which we will have to deal with in the future yeah um and look i mean i think this is every person who grew up with monsters inc like i think that has always been a dream oh sure mm-hmm. most definitely, have this yeah. as a ride so i think they kind of nailed it on this one not gonna lie yeah i'm excited oh I'm, i mean you mentioned aerosmith do you think there's an no they, they they just put all that money in to fix the track for aerosmith i was about to say do you think there's any chance especially on the uh, on the back of Aerosmith announcing their retirement. Do you, do you think there's any chance that this would take uh, Aerosmith's spot? Hmm. I guess it's possible. I'm leaning towards no, just, yeah. just it's a different because. kind of track. Yeah, it's a different kind. Of, I think because it's hard to tell based look on looking at this model that we've got up on screen. It's hard to tell how big, how much space they're going to need. But I actually think it needs more space than the rock and roller coaster building. But maybe, well, I mean, maybe, maybe they could gut the rock and roller coaster building, and then uh, they got what, uh, what the uh, Lightning McQueen Academy next door. Yeah, yeah, that's true. It's another Pixar thing. So you're right. I, I'm not saying it, that's that's impossible. I'm just saying that's to, in my mind less likely. But it could, it could happen. Well, regardless of where it goes, I think this is going to be a very killer attraction and another reason to go to Hollywood Studios. But another reason to go to Hollywood Studios and kind of proves a point that we on the monorail and other Disney fans have been saying they could do with a current attraction. Uh, Damara was then joined on stage by creative leads from across the company, including uh, Jennifer Lee from Walt Disney Animation, uh, Peter or Pete Doctor from Pixar, and uh, some guy, Kevin Feige from Marvel, and uh, Dave Filoni from uh, Lucasfilms to share several upcoming collaborations with... 
Epic Games and Fortnite. Uh, Dave <laughs> Filoni then teased he and John Fabra are working on a Mandalorian and Grogu story for Star Wars Smuggler's Run in Galaxy Edge. And Heck we yeah. have been asking for different runs for the Falcon forever. And this confirms that Disney can do this with the Falcon. And I love the fact that they are actually doing this and the different runs we're going to be able to put the Falcon through are going to have Mando and baby Yoda. Yeah. So awesome. Heck yeah. Like, like don't care about Fortnite. I understand <laughs> that Disney put a whole bunch of money into Epic and the team up with Fortnite. Get it off the stage. Don't care. Yeah, but, but I this... understand not everything is for me. Right. And this is a good use of that technology for sure. I mean, the, the, Essentially, when they created Smuggler's Run, they talked about using the Unreal Engine uh, to power that mm -hmm. video game, basically, that you're playing Which when you is a, Smuggler's Run. It's it's a very good engine. I will, it is. Like, mm -hmm. It's very updated, very... Listen, I play Fortnite, so I'm kind, I'm kind of offended by Landon right now. That's okay. <laughs> I offend you all the time, Steppers. What are that you is about? also very true. Um, I... I will say what they're doing with Fortnite confuses me because it it's is a lot, but also I I respect Unreal Engine, so I'm I'm excited to see how they implement or utilize it. It is a cool parks. piece of technology. I'll give you that. And honestly, I can't wait until uh, Elsa can like uh, snipe people from 300 yards away and then like 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 floss on their bodies. That's that that's gonna be awesome. Well, it's funny you say that because I don't know if you if you were plugged into this part of it, but just as a side note, they are putting Disney villains into Fortnite apparently. So, <laughs> no, of exciting. course they are. That's of exciting. So, so they're maybe getting not... my dollary dues for that one. Dude. <laughs> maybe not Elsa's, but like maybe maybe Gaston can yeah. can hit, can, uh, can gritty on people. <laughs> <laughs> Do people still gritty steppers? I don't even know what that means, so I'm gonna say no. Uh, okay, all right, so. Now, that concludes the announcements, as far as I know, for Hollywood Studios. Was there anything you thought that we'd hear? Honestly, just we already really talked about it. I kind of thought we might get some sort of announcement that the the Muppets were being retired. Like, I, I thought that might happen. Um, and maybe this is sort of a soft way of doing it, and we'll hear about it later. But that was really the only thing that I, I thought. Other, otherwise, or maybe something else in the animation courtyard. And again, this could be the announcement for that. But. The only thing that kind of surprised me that we didn't hear no timetable for when any of this is coming along, uh, yeah. as opposed to what we heard in animal kingdom, they're on a timeline of 2027 opening for, uh, for the, uh, coastal America, I believe it's called or uh, tropical, America's tropical uh, America's yeah. tropical America's excuse me. Um, but it's like, we we didn't get a timeline when the monsters uh, coaster is going to open. We didn't get a date for when uh, Mando and Grogu storyline is going to start running on Smuggler's Run. I would imagine it would be easier to implement the Smuggler's Run aspect as opposed to building a whole dang new attraction. Uh, but I I was kind of surprised they didn't be like, oh, by the way, by the end of the year, you'll be able to fly alongside Mando and Grogu. Yeah. Other than that, I mean, nothing I feel that was left unsaid when it comes to studios. Okay. Steffers, any thoughts on that one? Um, I I mean, based off of the fact they couldn't even tell us where this is going, I'm not, for that, I'm surprised we don't, or I'm not surprised we don't have a timeline because I'm surprised that they don't even know where they're putting this yet, but they felt the need to announce it, even though they said that dirt is moving. So, like, in your head, you would think that they know where this is going. Mm -hmm. Um. Uh, I think this is one of those highly anticipated will come eventually thing, yeah. unfortunately. Like, I think this is one of those things where we have to have an announcement for each park. But this is this feels like the least solid one. Mm -hmm. Like, I know they have models, but I, in terms of like trajectory, like I think they're they're prioritizing some other stuff before they. Yeah, that's interesting. I don't know. I, I, I totally see what you're saying. Like, I mean, even though Josh tomorrow said all this stuff is being worked on now out of the things that were announced, I could see this either getting like delayed or changed like big time before we see it come to fruition. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's true. I think like, especially, I think 
what's happening is the logistics side of everything. I think that the fact that maybe they do know where it's going and they just didn't want to say it at D23, which I don't know why you wouldn't do that. But maybe it'll have to scale down, scale up, move things around. Like, I I think that it makes sense as a concept, but where they're putting it will make, like, makes a big difference. And I just don't know if they really have all this ironed out yet. Yeah. I think they have some ideas where they would slot the attractions they've announced. Yeah. In the sure. parks. Mm-hmm. I think so too. I just, but, but to Stepper's point, why, why, why wouldn't they announce where it's going? So, yeah. It's just, it's, it's weird. I, maybe more just to not worry people. I, I don't know. Well, honestly, I, like, like by not announcing it, I think yeah. they've, they've worried some. They people. have worried Hashtag a lot of people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh. And remember, for only pennies a day, you too can save the Muppets. Hashtag save the Muppets. Oh, my goodness. Okay. All right. Over to Epcot. Steffers. Oh, that's me. I I am the Epcot person. Okay, so Epcot. I think we got the, an announcement and a half for Epcot, which is fine. <laughs> it It's a choice. Um, the They are doing a Spaceship Earth Lounge. This futuristic lounge will offer breathtaking views of the park, innovative cocktails, and a menu inspired by the iconic attraction. The lounge is slated to open in 2025. That yeah. is like tomorrow. Yeah, but it could be end of 2025. That is still like tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, we're in August, y'all. How did that happen? Yeah, it is soon, but here's the thing. So... Most people know that when you when you exit Spaceship Earth, you come into that area that has all the interactive exhibits. Above there is like a group meeting space, like for corporate events and stuff. I to didn't me, know that existed. Yeah, uh, this looks like that's that space because it's facing behind Spaceship Earth. You can see in the concept art, uh, you could look out and see the Imagination Pavilion. And then also you see uh, World Celebration Gardens right there behind the lounge. So I that must be that they're just redoing maybe they don't need that group space anymore maybe they well actually they don't because they built that uh over the interventions they built the communicore a hall so communicore hall is really group event space and i guess now that they have that they can reuse this this area for regular guests i'm glad it's not a dvc lounge um and it's something that i'll be able to access i'm excited i can't wait it looks it looks so cool Mm-hmm. Um, and I think they said something about the the cocktails. Yeah, it says innovative cocktails and immediately innovative inspired cocktails. by the tales. Yeah, iconic attraction. So I think you're going to be able to get like a thank the Phoenician shot or something. <laughs> oh, that'd be so cute. <laughs> I can't wait to order the Dame Judy Dench. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I am excited for this and I think this is uh, I'm interested to see what else they'll serve or if it's going to literally be like an Oga's but Spaceship Earth like in terms of you really just focus on the drinks and maybe like there's like two appetizers or I hope it's not like like Oga's where it's like you got 45 minutes drinking get out well I will say this looks kind of small it does look small Uh yeah Yeah. Uh it could I mean, that's a decently long bar, but this is going to be a popular space. Like it may that's be a, mm-hmm. it, yeah, it may be a reservations only or uh, you have to, it could be like the space 220 lounge where you can walk up, but you got to wait, you know. Um, I have a feeling this will be very popular for the nighttime show. Oh my gosh. No kidding. <laughs> yeah. So you're right. This is going to be reservations. I think you're right. Especially or, with that with that big giant window looking out over, uh, yep, that will well, be prime viewing for some fireworks, y'all. Or it'll be a spaceship Earth lounge dessert party or some. Oh, yes, absolutely, like they'll do that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, there it is. Oh, oh you're right. <laughs> yeah. I listen. I think during the day, all's fair in love and war. I think at night, you know, you hope and pray and continue to slay. What am I gonna say? Here it is. <laughs> <laughs> I like. I think this is gonna be great. I just I, capacity wise, the size of it. I think it's a perfect party. Yeah, like a dessert party or like a maybe they'll do like a. Ooh, you know what would be really cool if they do an adults 
only like obviously you can bring your kids but like an adult like a an adult themed party since yeah. it's a bar kind of thing yeah. i don't know what that would look like but upside down pineapples um <laughs> the, the, so i also but speaking of that i i think <laughs> I think groups <laughs> groups would be able to still rent this space out. As, as we're talking about this, it's making more sense to me. I think they are going to have to control the capacity here, mm -hmm. which means that more than likely, I'm leaning towards you're going to have to make reservations no matter what time it is. Mm -hmm. It's going to be like Oga's. Um, mm -hmm. And then they could block it out for the evening for event parties or dessert parties, just like you said, Steppers, because this is prime real estate. That view of the fireworks is just, that's too good. Like, so... Yeah, I make some good points sometimes. Sometimes you do. Time. You, nailed, you nailed this one, Steffers. I really try. I really do try. <laughs> um, I actually didn't hear that they said anything about uh test track, but you know, apparently they did say they reimagined test track. Uh, and talked about the makeover. Um, we're getting updated technology and an and an enhanced guest experience, and it's set to reopen in twenty twenty five. I, let, what, I, wait, listen, wait! What does that what? mean? I, I I didn't even realize enhanced guest experience. What that's that what I was. Mean? That's what I was about to say because this is what we get right now for Test Track. We they've already enhanced it once by letting you design your own car. Well, technically, yeah. we don't get even... anything with Test Track right now. Landon, <laughs> am I wrong? Watching you? No, you're not wrong. <laughs> but I like. Are we going to keep the build your own car thing? Or I like if I'm being honest, that seems like a waste of time, and it yeah. kind of just bogs up the line. Are uh, what what can you enhance about test track other than like the ride vehicles and get like other than the ride vehicles? What how are you enhancing my guest experience? Everyone gets to go home with a free Chevy Cobalt. <laughs> That would know. that would be a good experience. <laughs> I honestly don't know. Like, I think though you're right. It mu maybe they're talking about changing the the queue interactive elements, which would make sense because I don't bring think that, back the test dummies. Yeah, I don't think the new I don't think the new track is going to be about oh you build your car and test it out. It, not it's not going to have that element quite as much as what this version did. I don't think, I, but I could be wrong. Who knows. But yeah, that's just interesting wording. We'll see. Thank thank you for allowing me space to consider that, Steffers. I'm really glad that I could uh be the voice of lots of thoughts. You did. Um I will say I'm pretty sure they're gonna overhaul like the cars. I think so no wheels go flying anymore. I think it'll just be I think it'll streamline the process in general. Yeah. But I don't think if you streamline your process, you should add, not to say that interactive elements in a queue are bad, but y'all already know how long the test track queue already is. So if you're trying to balance turnaround time and guest experience, you have to meet in the middle. And I, and I genuinely don't know how they plan to do that. I do like the exit, though. I like how they have the showroom. I don't know if they still have that. And yeah, the showroom do. kind of vibe. And I hope they keep that based off of whatever sponsor. Is Chevy still staying a sponsor? I think so, yeah. yeah. Okay, so like keep that. Like that's cool. It's given better vibes. I don't know. Yeah, I like. I mean, <laughs> I always think it's kind of odd because I always wonder, could you buy a car from Epcot? Like, I mean, not maybe one that's sitting in the showroom, but could you? Hmm. They've got they have Chevy salespeople in there with like tablets and stuff. If you wanted yeah. to, could you buy a car while you're there? I don't know. Be like, I'm gonna drive this one home, y'all. Right. <laughs> Take a look at this Corvette. Uh, Ooh, and then you, get and then you can, and you get a discount on a Disney license plate. Oh, that'd be yeah. That's the kicker. <laughs> no, honestly, if you're paying Disney prices for a car, I hope they throw that license plate in. Yeah, no it's kidding. Disney. Question, Ain't no does way. My annual pass discount work on this. <laughs> <laughs> I would love for you to ask them. Yeah. I like I like the little interactive like race tracks where, uh, in the current version, the version that's now closed. You could whatever your, your car that you built in the concept room, you were able to like tap your magic band and then race that little car on the on the racetrack. That was fun. Um, it was like a, an overhead projected, and you raced against some of the other people on these little tracks. I don't know if you all ever did that, but I thought it was fun. Never experienced that. Yeah. So anyway, I hope they keep some of that stuff. But yeah, it'll be this. I'm looking forward to a enhanced guest experience. 
for sure. Whatever that means. Yeah. Okay. So now the question for Epcot. Anything? Yes. That you, anything you thought they would announce that they didn't? Spaceship Earth update. Yep. Exactly. That's gone, I like, guess. Yeah. We're I, getting a spaceship yeah. earth update. It's just a lounge. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, guys, that's what we totally meant the entire time. What do what, what, what do you think we'd mess with the attraction? No. You silly billies. Come on. <laughs> yeah. Well, and aside from the lounge, like we already knew that they were reimagining Test Track. This is this is the place where I feel like they didn't announce anything that's like, holy crap, that's awesome. That's well, something that's gonna complete. draw people to the park. Yeah, Epcot's complete. Didn't you get the memo? Yeah, well, I, I thought that there was a chance we might get another country in World Showcase, but yeah, I was I, I was kind of holding out hope for that too. But at this point, that might be just a hope in futility. I yeah. feel like I have a stupid question because no I'm not questions. savvy. I'm people, not steppers. okay. Well, then I'm a stupid person. That's no. the question. Um, yeah, I'm the stupid person on this podcast, steppers. Everybody knows that. <laughs> I know that each country they are like they're partnered with some sort of something and and each country has rights and and their own thing. Could they switch out a country? Is that like a thing that they could in theory do or not like necessarily? It's relegated. Yeah, they could. <laughs> okay. I mean, I didn't know if that could. was a possible um, I don't know what they would change that wouldn't cause some sort of uproar. I in my brain, I was just curious if that's even an option, or they would literally have to add a, another space, yeah, for a different country. They, but there is space, so yeah. you know, um, over near the the outpost where they have the drums, and there's like the mm -hmm. there's a you know a, an a quick service thing right there. There's space there, like plenty of space for another country. Um, oh, you're right. I was I, I was trying to think where they would put a country or a new country, but yeah, that would that would be a perfect spot. Yeah. And actually, I think when we were doing our M34D deep dive into World Showcase, we found out that I think at the time only Morocco still had a connection to the host nation. The rest of them don't really anymore. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And now that one doesn't, I don't think. So I think post COVID, um, they the, show up. Yeah, they still bring in representatives, like cultural representatives for the countries, but I don't think they have any connection to like the tourism board or anything like that, like they used to. So hmm. sad, but I, but yeah, I wish they, I wish that they, uh, I wish they still did because I think it brought some authenticity. But at the same time, it does make it maybe more flexible if they wanted to switch something out. Like they could. So it wouldn't create an international incident if they decided to uh, to send, like, Japan down to AAA or something. That's right. No more Japan. Goodbye, Japan. <laughs> oh, that's, that's like, the last one they would change out. I, I mean, I th and they're not going to change Norway out. I think Morocco is probably the only one that could potentially get changed out if they were going to do that. But I think Morocco is so cool. Like, it's, it's such a unique um, offering in World Showcase that I hope it doesn't. Mm -hmm. But I hope it doesn't go away. So, all right, done with Epcot. It's time for the big mama. It's time to bring it home to Magic Kingdom. Landon, tell us what we've been waiting for. Oh, baby boy! Um, uh, big things are happening in Magic King. Well, well you already got the uh, the slide up. I was I, I was gonna build to that, but since you already have the slide up, I guess I'll go in the uh, in the order <laughs> of the notes. Um, a uh, long awaited and long wished expansion to the most magical place on earth was announced. Uh, villains. Land, the uh, highly anticipated land, will immerse guests in a world of darkness and intrigue. Uh, the expansion will bring new and beloved stories to life as Disney Imagineers craft a land based on the wickedly wonderful Disney villains you just love to loathe. While more details are coming, this new land is underway with two, count them, two new attractions being planned, as well as, of course, dining and shopping and more. Uh, Josh tomorrow told the crowd be prepared you poor unfortunate souls it's going to be a fearless new vision for what disney experiences can be oh that that makes me so excited because you had to wonder like how how much will they lean into the spooky nature of a villain's land 
they got to keep it kid friendly. They got to make it approachable. It's especially it being in Magic Kingdom. Yeah, it's in Magic Kingdom, but I think this gives me hope that it's at least going to. There's going to be enough um, aura and ambiance that makes you feel like, oh, this is different than the rest of the park. No, her name is pronounced Aurora. 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 (laughs) But um, yeah, I. Whoo. This was the one, and they saved it for last. I was actually in bed asleep before this was announced last night, but my goodness gracious, I, I really didn't know if this was ever going to happen. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, now, I, it, mm. Yeah. If, we, we, if, if you paid attention to Disney and their planning of parks, we know at one point when uh, Animal Kingdom was getting planned, there was going to be uh, Beastly yeah. uh, Kingdom, and that was going to lean into some darker uh parts of the imagineers minds and then that got scrapped so i'm very curious to see what we're going to get in villains land because i mean this is going to be in the flagship park of the orlando resort in the magic kingdom so yeah to your point i am curious how dark quote unquote this is going to be uh but yeah this is this is an exciting announcement and I've already seen people on Twitter. Well, I don't think this is actually going to happen guys. (laughs) It's like, okay, calm down. Just like, like calm down y'all. Well, and literally they've already started preparing the land where this is going to go. So we talked about previously on the show about them. Disney's preparing land. They've gone through the permitting process. And one of the things they have to do because I mean, essentially Disney's built in a swamp. They have to sort of like, (laughs) drain the swamp not to coin a term that i wish Mm, i could say mm, Um, political savvy right there with that quote (laughs) yeah uh, but they do have to sort of like dry the land out a little bit and um offset like the run the water the runoff all that sort of thing and and i think where this is going is sort of like conservation area as well so they probably had to set aside some more conservation area but there's a lot that goes into all that but it's already it's already happening and I think if you're if you're trying to think about where on the Disney map this would be, if you think about like the area that's sort of like to the northwest, if you're looking in cardinal direction terms, the northwest of the Disney Park, which is the side where Haunted Mansion is, um, I believe it's the space that's just to the west of like all that, which is going to be outside of the current footprint where like the railroad is and all that stuff. It's going to be outside of that, I think. So interesting yeah because a a lot of people thought when we were talking beyond big Big thunder that maybe a villain's land would be beyond big thunder uh but that seems to not be the case because now we know what's going to go there but we'll get to that in a minute but this yeah i'm Um, I'm just so excited i have thoughts of what we could get in this land what do you think i I think very i don't want to say skewed but i'm like very positive we're getting a descendants something a oh interesting musical show a descendants like family ride of some sort uh d- there's no way like you can't balance normal villains and like not throw in the descendants because people go crazy over that and yeah. there's just ain't no way ain't no way that's true hi question for steffers land and of the monday morning monorail podcast steffers what is descendants Descendants is like the the uh, when the villains were kids, I think. No, I think it's actually offspring of the villains, literally. Offspring of the villains, or yeah, yeah. I think you're right, actually. Upon after I said that, I think it's the offspring of each villain. I think. Follow up question: Landed on the Monday Morning Monorail. What? <laughs> yeah. That, that yeah no that's, that's like, a thing. It's a huge. It's a huge, huge. It's very huge. popular. Yeah, very popular. We missed it. We, we missed it. But yeah, for people I've younger than I've never seen it. I've never seen it. I have no interest in it. I don't. That's not a thing. I will also say, <laughs> you know, I very yeah. rarely say this on the podcast. I learned something today. <laughs> I'm so proud of you. Um, I will say that one of the cast members from the Descendants is no longer um here with us. So right. yeah. it would be a that would be a little difficult in terms of balancing the sensitivity of that, but I do think Descendants is a big enough uh, a franchise, franchise, big enough, yeah. 
Okay. I was like, is franchise the right word? Yeah. A big enough thing where like I think everyone would love a descendants something. I I don't think it'll be the like the flagship. I think it'll still be focused on art, the ones we we come to love, but I do think to tie in a more of a family friendly element, this that would be a perfect opportunity to do it. Well, Maleficent has to like like be the to borrow your your phrase, the the flagship attraction of Villains Land, something Maleficent, like like in her castle, some sort. Uh, Probably. Concept I, art is that not what that is up there on the on the? I on think the that's screen? yeah, I think so, and I think that's the Maleficent dragon right there, blowing the green fire. Oh, to the left, yeah, I see that. Oh, you're right. I I yeah, I'd blend it into the background there. Yeah. So. We got a couple different castles here, but I would say that the evil queen is going to be a part of it. Um, yeah, I man, I, there there's just so much cool stuff that they could do with this, and mm -hmm. and I'm also thinking, what a fun area this is going to be during the not so scary party oh, in the future. Yeah. Uh huh. Um, sorry to circle back. Uh, son of Cruella Deville, son of Jafar, daughter of the evil queen, daughter of Maleficent. And then I do believe, like, the kids of the princesses are also, like, included in that. What? what, what? In, in the franchise. Yeah. <laughs> Villains are having kids? What? Next, you're going to tell me that Emperor Palpatine has kids. That's ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> That's, uh-uh, no, sir. Uh -uh. Well, wait, wait till I tell you he has grandkids. <laughs> <laughs> That's oh. just silly. Come on, y'all. <laughs> well... I know that that was the big one, Landon, but yeah, I, I just, uh, I'm, ah, my goodness gracious. I'm still excited for, for yeah, the rest uh -huh. of what's on the list here. Yeah, I mean, like, there was there was a lot of big announcements for Magic Kingdom, Villains Land being the, uh, the heavy hitter, but uh, I'm not a giant fan of this franchise, but Cars Land, I think, is going to be a very cool addition to Magic Kingdom. Uh, join the fun as Radiator Springs comes to life in a new land filled with familiar characters, exciting attractions, and delicious dining options in a reimagined section of Frontierland. Guests will leave Radiator Springs behind and head off into the wilderness with two new Cars attractions, one that will be an off-road thrilling rally race and a family friendly attraction that even the youngest racers will love uh, no official opening date has been announced for the new edition of cars land in the magic kingdom uh in the frontier land area jay referenced uh, what's going to be beyond big thunder well now we have our answer and it's a uh, it's chow lightning mcqueen inference <laughs> yeah i didn't expect that did not either did not either and I think people were speculating because there were some rumors that Radiator Springs Racers was coming to the Magic Kingdom. People just basically thought, oh, we're getting the Disneyland ride. But a copy paste, kind of, but kind of what we were talking about with the uh, Indiana Jones attraction in uh, Animal Kingdom, we're getting new cars attractions. Uh, Josh Tomorrow went on to said, uh, the American West has always been about keeping your eyes on the horizon, believing in yourself, carving your own path, and striving towards success. That goes for miners in the mountain, bears from the country, and a princess from the bayou, or a race car from the big city. Huh. That's interesting. <laughs> what a what a tie-in, Josh. Right? A tie-in. You really just yeah. made that ah, work, didn't you? It's almost like one of those things that he mentioned one of everything is in Frontierland or Frontierland adjacent. You could also sort of play the one of these things is not like the other. <laughs> <laughs> it's a game for everybody. <laughs> um, but although, you know, that that definitely confirms that I don't think Big Thunder was going anywhere, but, you know, Big Thunder's here to stay. Um, and yeah, a I, I do like it makes sense that they're going to use the theming. Um, the American Southwest, the frontier. I love it. Um, uh, I'm actually really excited for the possibility of this rally race car. Again, we're looking at concept art here on the YouTube. If you're watching it, these look like four seater cars, which would be mm -hmm. different from like the test track cars. Um, and I don't, I mean, trackless, they're, they're kicking up dirt and stuff. It look, well, they make it look that way, but I, I can't imagine it's going to be a track. It, I guess it could be, I don't know. It looks exciting though. 
just like yeah, I'll, be, I'll, I'll, I'll be interested to see how they pull that off uh with it being off-road and stuff that would that would that would be impressive if they went with the trackless technology but then again but they so, do that out door like I, that's if what this is an outdoor uh-huh. concept can you do that outdoors is, a, right. is the good question that's I a think. great question great question and i don't know do it disney i dare you or do we get to drive these ourselves because they ain't that, no way, <laughs> ain't no way <laughs> what could dude. possibly go wrong what are you talking about they let us drive those cars in uh in tomorrowland <laughs> yeah. so you know oh also speaking of if you're a fan of those cars and you were afraid that cars was going to come and take guess what i don't think so no. those are those are sticking around i know yeah. And those beautiful, wonderful smells. So you still get the smells. But the smell of Tomorrowland is, of course, exhaust. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's cool. I I like Cars. I, I mean, I, I wouldn't say I love every one of the movies, but I like it as a franchise. I like the characters. Um, I like that this is going to be different. I think that even though it's cool that Magic Kingdom, no matter where you go, has some similar elements, I think it's cool to at least make them make a unique spin on how they use those franchises in each place. And so that's pretty exciting to me. I, with all the jealousy I have about, you know, the Avengers campus and DCA and they're getting a cocoa ride in uh, mm-hmm. Disneyland and, and all this kind of stuff. I, yeah, I'm pretty happy. I'm pretty happy with what we've got over here. I'll say. Yeah. That. Mm-hmm. And, and uh, that's not all uh, coming to magic kingdom, uh, Disney starlight, this new nighttime spectacular, will replace the Main Street Electrical Parade. Very timely, y'all getting around to it. Uh, Combining the cutting-edge technology with classic Disney magic, uh, Disney Starlight is set to debut in 2025. Uh, Key features of Disney Starlight include storytelling. Uh, The parade will use technology to weave together new narratives featuring beloved Disney characters. Uh, Speaking of Disney characters, expect to see characters from iconic Disney animation studio films like uh, Peter Pan, Encanto, Frozen, The Good Dinosaur. Okay, probably not The Good Dinosaur. And then, uh, of course, when it comes to Disney, you expect some magic. So uh, the Blue Fairy will play a central role in bringing to life the magic. And of course, with Disney comes magic. And of course, with Disney comes innovation. Disney Starlight will showcase the latest advancements in technology, promising a visually stunning experience. Yeah. Jay, I think one of the things that you mentioned when you were hoping for announcements for D23 was some sort of nighttime parade returning to the Magic Kingdom. Does this announcement of Disney Starlight scratch that itch for you? It absolutely does. I was thrilled. Like this was I think this was the first thing they announced for Walt Disney World at the convention and I like they could have just stopped for me. I was like, "Great, that's what I wanted. I'm done." <laughs> Uh, well, I mean, hell, you said you were in bed for uh, Village yeah. Land, so apparently yes. y- y- you were fine with that. It's like, all right, off to bed, y'all. I got what I wanted. Good night. <laughs> um, and I curled up in my flappy boy. Um, yeah. No, yeah, I and I'm I'm thrilled that it, we're getting something brand new too, because I feel like when brand new parades have come out recently, it's been for other parks in other places around the world, and we've gotten like a recooked version of the Spectro Magic, which I love. Or the Main Street Electrical Parade, I love that too. But mm-hmm. something brand new with brand new floats, brand new technology, and I have just—I promise you, like Magic Kingdom feels different to me when there's a nighttime parade, and it just—it feels like it really caps the night off. Of course, you got to have, uh, you know, happily ever after, and and that's the real kiss good night. But something you'll see, I I will bet that crowd flow is going to change. Um, when Starlight comes out, because it used to be that you'd get the parade and then people would head out. And it's sort of a cue for like some of the people who have younger members of the family along with them. They're like, we're not going to stay and get caught up in the mess for the fireworks. Let's watch this parade and then we'll get out of here. So it's going to go back to some of that flow, I think, which is good. But I, I love a nighttime parade. You know, I'm a sucker for bright, sparkly lights. And <laughs> yeah. I, I can't wait to see how they execute this, but it's gonna be it's gonna be good. I wonder if they're going to utilize drones. Mm. We have seen good them testing that. drones on uh, the Orlando property more and more, particularly down at uh, Disney Springs. So I mean, and and what was that a uh, French company that uh, re- or, uh, opened up a office in the Central Florida area? The oh Disney yeah, Parker lay Road. drones. 
<laughs> Lid drones. <laughs> is that what they're called, Jay? <laughs> that feels uh, borderline offensive. So that's justin.monorail at monorail.com. <laughs> no, at morningmonorail.com. Yeah. Right. <laughs> But oh. I I I think this sounds exciting. Of course, uh, there's there's a whole lot of you know fluffy PR talk in this announcement. But I mean, like if if they can pull off half of what they're saying, I mean, the fact that a a nighttime parade is returning to the Magic Kingdom, I think it's hilarious. They say is replacing the Main Street Electrical Parade. Very <laughs> timely on that one, Disney. <laughs> Great job, y'all you, finally got around to it. But I mean, like the fact that they are offering a nighttime parade again is. So awesome of an announcement. Uh, we didn't get a start date on this, which I thought was kind of odd, but Just it's the same sometime next year, yeah. Yeah, I mean, like, like love the fact that it's coming back. Take take all the time you need, Disney. You take it <laughs> enough time, just 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 get it right. I and uh so awesome. Uh, and one more piece of news when it comes to the Magic Kingdom. We've talked about this uh on previous podcasts not too long ago. Heck, I think it might have been last week or two weeks ago. Uh the Pirates of the Caribbean or, or Caribbean, depending on where you're from, uh the tavern. Uh, we got some new information on that. This new dining experience will <clears throat> transport guests to the heart of the uh, Caribbean. Uh, expect to uh, enjoy themed food and drinks while soaking in the pirate atmosphere. Uh, the tavern is scheduled to open sometime next year. Um, yeah, we did have concept art for this. And apparently, I don't know what happened to that slide, but it's it's missing. <laughs> So I'm just going to stop sharing right now. And... Okay, perfect. All right. Oh, I was adding it as we were talking. Okay, I can bring it back up, but yeah. Bring it back up. I brought it back. Bring it back, y'all. I'll bring it back, mm -hmm. y'all. This is how it should be done. Um, But yeah, hey. it's coming back, uh, coming sometime next year. Uh, Themed food and drinks. We still don't know what that means, do we, guys? Uh, like, uh, no. No confirmation say... if, uh, if there will be pirate grog and or ale, do we, guys? Well, I want to tell you. I've been examining this picture very, very closely, and now we do have the we have the concept art here. Um, the woman that's standing at the bar in the white shirt with red stripes is holding wine. Is she not? That looks like wine yes, to me. That, that does wine. look like wine. Yeah. So if that's the case, and it does look okay. like the woman at the end of the table is is raising a mug. Of course, who knows? That could be root beer, but it looks like a beer mug. So yeah, you bring me your finest A and W root beer, mate. Yeah. Again. The capacity looks limited. It does. So, communal tables. Communal communal tables. If if they do this the way that they do every other venue at the Magic Kingdom, if it's a sit down location where you can't take things away, they can serve alcohol. So, I think again, this is going to be like a Oga's kind of a setup here. Yeah, because I mean, like like to your point, I mean, Skipper's Canteen serves alcohol in the magic kingdom but again yeah. you, you can't walk in there saddle up to the bar and then you know take a drink and go stand in line for big thunder or anything like that so yeah so they didn't confirm it but i'm just saying to me i don't know how you would have a pirate's bar and not have grog or rum or something like it has mm -hmm. to it's um, pirates yeah it's pirates and people I mean, people are still going to go. They're still going to spend money. Kids are going to love it. But also, I do think that if you look, it looks like there is a kid in the picture, but a majority of the clientele appear to be adults. Yep. Mm -hmm. So, interesting. Very, very interesting. But, and again, that's coming sometime 2025. So Yeah. Great. I can't wait. I mean, honestly... I, I, I know we've been talking as we've been going through, like, what, what do you feel like was left out of these announcements? But I'm pretty satisfied with everything we got, especially knowing Josh tomorrow said all this stuff is under development right now. Mm -hmm. So, yes. But does, of course, does that, that could be a line, but at could, the same time, I mean, this is uh, blue skies. This is not. And the fact that he says this is not blue skies. I'm yeah. I'm willing to take him at his word. Yeah, I think we we have to. We got to take him at his word on this one because if not, we're all going to be very sad. Um, <laughs> yes, uh huh. Yeah, he will he will have disappointed a lot of grown adults. <laughs> and Sefers, we were talking about this, you know, previously, but uh, you know, I think people were sort of expecting is Disney. What's Disney's counterpunch going to be to Epic? And 
again, I don't think any of this in particular is 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 that, but I do think that especially like this villain's land, the uh, the new parade, the Pirates Tavern in Magic Kingdom. You look over at at Animal Kingdom, the Encanto, you know, all the Tropical America stuff, and Hollywood Studios, Monsters Inc. Land. These are all going to be attendance drivers for those parks when they do open. And maybe you know, maybe some of this happens in twenty six, like some of the stuff we don't have dates for. But I think that Disney's sort of playing a a spread it out game with a lot of this stuff, and as well they should, um, because you want people coming back year after year, but I don't think any of this is sort of like a direct response, but it's more like, well, we're going to be doing stuff to bring people in and building on what we already have. And I'm fine with that. Yeah. I mean, like, like I was telling you uh, before, I mean, obviously everyone, or if you're new to the show, you don't know, but if you have been listening for a while, like, you know, that I'm the resident universal stand person, whatever. But in terms of all of these Disney announcements, I don't, going into this i one it it was never about responding to epic universe at least for me i knew going into this that they were going to announce updates or new things period it's it, i don't think you can compare epic universe and disney in general like they're different you know different strokes for different folks kind of thing like you, you can't it, they're not one to one and i think that all of these announcements, no matter the timeline, I do think that they are trying to better their their parks, you yeah. know, globally. Period. I I don't listen. They're doing the most, so I don't I don't think you can look at these announcements and be like, oh, th- like this is what you're doing, and and Universal's coming out with a new. I, dude, Disney already has more parks. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like Walt Disney World's four parks. Universal sitting at three, Epic will be four. Like, you just can't, that's not, that's, uh, I think what we should be measuring it by is, is Disney listening to their fans? And are they doing, like, updates in a, you know, XYZ timeline? And I think, one, uh, this proves that they're listening for the most part. And two, they're doing it. I mean, 2027 is three years away, but that's pretty fast in terms of, all the things that they have to do and considering they're already moving dirt or whatever he said, <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I will play devil's advocate on this knowing full well that Epic universe is my most anticipated like theme park thing coming up. Mm-hmm. But I think these announcements by Disney are great strides on their part. Yeah. So. Yeah. Overall. Well, and, very, very. And nice. you mentioned 2027. That's, that's for the dates that we know that's for Correct. new lands coming to animal kingdom. That's, that's stuff that is pinned down. I think we're going to see stuff like, like Mando and Grogu showing up in smugglers run well before 2020. Like, yeah. like I, I, I think that's coming sometime next year, like probably early yeah. 2025. And, and I'm, that is just some idiot on a podcast speculating, uh, but that, that feels like something that Disney can turn around very fast. And, mm-hmm. and uh, we talked about the pirates tavern is going to be sometime 2025. I would expect that to be the first half of 2025. Cause that's been something that, that we've been talking about. It feels like forever. And mm-hmm. a, another uh, place to get a beverage that was announced uh, the spaceship earth uh, lounge. I think mm-hmm. that will be sometime next year as well. So, I mean, Disney, I, I'm pleased with what we got when it comes to Walt Disney World yesterday. And then it's like, uh, Jay briefly mentioned everything that's going on in Disneyland. It's like, uh, Avengers Campus got like, what, three new attractions announced yesterday or blast uh, over I the mean, weekend. That was, that was impressive. Yeah. Like, like, well done Disney. And it's like, I, like, I, I know some people it's like, oh, wh- what is their answer? I, I don't think Disney has to answer for Epic Universe. It's like, we say it on this podcast. It's not Disney versus Universal. It's Disney and Universal, y'all. So mm-hmm. it's it's Stephers nailed it. Different strokes for different folks. It's like like if if you are a theme park fan right now, we're eating good, y'all. Yeah. Just 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 enjoy the ride, literally and figuratively. <laughs> that is a good line. It works very well for this case for sure. I try. Um, yeah, great stuff. I mean, the hype is real. Mm-hmm. A lot to look forward to, a lot to a lot of trips to plan coming up for those of you who <laughs> uh, need to look at the calendar because I know next year for a lot of people is going to be about epic. 
And maybe Correct. and maybe that's part of why Disney's like we don't need to cram any anything in super fast. Like Universal's doing Epic and then we'll have some time after that to like, you know, cuz also there will be people who travel down to Epic who, you know, maybe they plan the trip that year and then they also go to Disney for a couple of days. So Disney's going to get people to do that. Mm -hmm. Um, you know. So you know what they sea say. SeaWorld with their penguin track. I'm just penguin saying, track just is a whole. Yeah, that's the true answer to Four. Epic. <laughs> yeah. Just so saying. really, really exciting. Oh, I wanted to mention. I know. I don't know if either one of you care about this, but I I saw that they officially announced that the Tron Aries movie is is I coming. I saw that. And it's going to have music by Nine Inch Nails. So ain't no way, dude. That's what they said. <laughs> huh. Yeah. Okay. Music, music by Nine Inch Nails. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, the last soundtrack had uh, what? Uh, Daft Punk. Daft Punk. I mean, yeah. Okay. Interesting direction. Yes. Uh huh. Yeah. I I liked Tron Legacy. I actually, I mean, I don't know. I think I'm an easy grader when it comes to some of this stuff, but I think Tron Legacy was fun. I'll watch Tron Aries if that's how you say it. It was um, fine. It was fun. Yeah. So this uh, might be a nerd hot take. I think Tron's kind of. Yeah, I mean, it did come out the original one in the what the eight what, what year was it eighty something? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, but then you say, well, so did Star Wars that came out in seventy seven. So, Star yeah. Wars holds up a whole lot better than Tron. Let me just. <laughs> yeah, eighty two is when the original Tron came out. I should have remembered my birth year. Um, I mean, so... it was very cutting edge in eighty. I, I I will give it that, but it's like a. Okay, all right. It's, it's weird to watch now, but uh huh, yeah. But the Tron ride is is pretty fun, so I'll give them that. But there's like really good stuff, really good stuff on the horizon. So much. I'm just glad that Jared Leto guy is finally getting some work. I know. I don't even know <laughs> if he'll be in the next one. All right, guys, did we cover everything we needed to? I think I have did. other things, but in terms of the East Coast, yeah. Yeah. Well, is yeah. there something you wanted to mention globally that you're excited about? Um, not per no, not particularly. I just had extra thoughts that aren't podcast episode worthy. Okay. Maybe live show worthy. Maybe I'll bring it up in the live show. All right. We can talk about it on the live show then. We're doing a live show? <laughs> not this week. Not this week. Everyone mark your calendars. We are going to hit the, the live feeds once again on YouTube. We'll be doing that on the 20th, August 20th. And I Tuesday, in my calendar, August twentieth. Yeah, and my idea for that was uh, for us to kind of go through our Halloween Horror Nights house hype list. Mm -hmm. and so we got to work on that. You've got some time to put your hype list together, and then also we can talk. You know, we can we can nerd out with whoever joins us on the live feed about all the exciting D twenty three announcements at that time. But man, this was so fun. I I I feel excited. I feel hopeful about the future for Disney, and and again. Anytime, any park, like the competition between parks is good because it's it's a better experience for all of us. And so I'm, I mean, and you telling me I got two lounge announcements at D23. <laughs> oh, so good. So good. So. Yeah, no wonder you went to bed early. You were a happy Papa Monterey. I was. Night. I was all full. I was, I was cozy and my flappy boy. Your flappy boy. I was, I was like, let's go to bed. I just want to say. Oh, am I allowed to say? I'm going to say it anyway. I am making a trip sooner than I anticipated, and I will require trying on that flappy boy. Okay. Sweater. I'll wash it. I'll wash it for you beforehand. <laughs> it's now a communal flappy boy. <laughs> no, no, no. Mine is like a one and done. I don't need joint custody. I just need them. <laughs> I have a perfect Photoshop idea that I just... <laughs> Everybody in your group gets to wear the flappy boy once. So says the does. <laughs> so it's funny. Like we're I I don't ever plan to go the Patreon direction ever again. But I'm sitting here thinking if we ever did that, uh, if you were at the top tier, I would give you one one day <laughs> one day's worth of flappy boy usage. It's like a flat Stanley. You would have to mail it out to subscribe. <laughs> yeah, and then you got it's the traveling pants of of hoodies. Um, <laughs> You get to use Flappy Boy however you'd like for one day, and then you got to send it back. Top tier of the Patreon. No, we're not. We're not doing that. But anyways, um, yeah, I'm excited, Steffers. You, I'm excited to see you. I mean, you're going to be here very soon, and that's exciting. I, I, mean, I want to just say, 
I it wasn't a pick one or the other. It was a very Steffers decision. And <laughs> if anyone knows me, you would not be surprised that I chose one over the other anyway. <laughs> so well, bucket list is gonna be That's yeah. A oh yeah, and you've got you know exciting stuff. You won't be here next week. For our recording because you're i on, won't you're on assignment during that period of time as well i am so i will say i'm going i'm do i'm doing a half plug go morning monorail that sort of thing yeah morning monorail on instagram i have i'm going to share so many things on there because i don't want to flood my own instagram with disneyland stuff for people that maybe don't care so yeah. <laughs> i will be sharing first i think I'm going to do as a first timer and going solo, like I'm going to have like a trip report, especially with all the new changes and like wanting to cry and stress out so much right now. <laughs> I'm ready. I'm so I can't ready. wait. This is going to be great content, Steffers. <laughs> For the content. So follow us on the socials, Morning Monorail, Instagram and Twitter. I started a TikTok for the Monday Morning Monorail. I can't believe I did it, but I did it. It's doing You're great. You're too old to start a TikTok. It's getting more traction than anything I do on anything else, so I'm loving he's it. He's doing. He's really doing great. Yeah, Monday Morning Monorail Pod, if you want to check us out on TikTok. We're on there now. Go follow us. I'll be sharing clips from the show and also other clips that I take oh. videos and stuff in the parks. We'll put them on there. Yeah, and I will also share... Well, I need to log in, but I will also share some some other coast content because I will share it. listen. We need you know, it. I'm determined. Duh. Yeah. Oh, also, by the way, follow us and subscribe on YouTube, Monday Morning Monorail on YouTube. We need the subscribers. We're close. I think we're almost to 300, but we're way behind the pace to get to 1,000 by April 1st. So get on it, people. Get on it. Subscribe. We're sharing our videos now of the podcast to YouTube. You want to see our smiling faces. You want to see what a flappy boy looks like. You got to go to YouTube. I know you That's do. That's also true. I mean, mm -hmm. subscribe just for the flappy boy. Subscribe for flappy boy. Do it for flappy boy. Uh, do it for the boy of the flaps. That's I'm right. I'm done. Sorry. It I'm is spelled. It is spelled with an I. B O I. Yep. Mm -hmm. It should be. Yep. Yep. So. All right. Now it's time. For us individually to share what we've going what we've got going on on our individual projects or otherwise steffers hmm. how That's about me. sipping oh. and bitching so, okay let me tell y'all so my birthday as we're recording this my birthday was yesterday aka saturday august 10th i had the best birthday period but what made it better is a is a book that's coming out on the 13th well yeah the 13th i got on my birthday so after we are done recording this, I am going to hole up and never talk to anybody for the next probable few days. Um, <laughs> we have an episode coming out Wednesday, the 14th, on the last book before the book I just got. So you can catch up, do all the things, and then after my Disneyland trip, I'm going to have a report on the, the, the new book. If you're looking on YouTube, you can see how pretty it is. It's in the background. Um, and then Adventures with Stuffers everywhere else to follow trip content alongside the morning monorail instagram because i listen i'm a cross poster and you'll <laughs> be all right that's all i have to say about that no shame in cross posting no shame you're not allowed to shame me no shame in your game mm -mm. exactly um so i want to say speaking of uh, the things that we're promoting i forgot to mention of course we have a group on facebook called the monday morning monorail fam and I just asked everybody what what their favorite announcement was oh, from, no. from D23. And we got some good responses. Uh, people are excited about Villains Land, of course. Um, we've got Chelsea. Chelsea said Villains Land, but that nighttime parade. But the reason the reason I bring up her response is she said, um, where is the Muppets announcement? Justin Krutzinger. She said, hashtag Save the Muppets. By the way, we need a Save the Muppets Monday morning monorail fam shirt. Chelsea. Have I got great news for you? There are hashtag Save the Muppet shirts on the T Public store. They exist. You pick your favorite character, and they're out there. Now I don't know if you specifically want one that's like a monorail fam, because that's something we could probably do too. But there are Save the Muppet shirts on the T Public store, so go check that out. Um, but yeah, love interacting with our people on Facebook and Discord as well. So join those two things. Squeeze in a couple plugs, Landon. Are you ready to sing your song? Me, 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 me. 
No, no, I'm not. Uh, <laughs> L-A-N-D-O-Z, please go follow me. Landon Doan, I'm the best. Landon Doan, not the rest. That's where you can follow me, 280 characters at a time. I also run a website, buttmuchchips.com, but much chips. Sit on your butt and munch. Uh, but in lieu of going there, uh, go to bonfire.com and search Living with the Landon. That's where you, yes, you, can get your very... Uh, Official question mark uh, merchandise for living with the Landon, where I Landon Doan for my 40th birthday on April 1st, 2025, will be going down to Epcot and will marathon ride living with the land in hopes of raising money for Second Harvest Food Bank of East Tennessee with all proceeds earmarked for the Food for Kids program. Uh, head over to the morningmonorail.com. Uh, and uh, we got a link that'll lead you there. And uh, I also appear on the Phil Show News Talk 98.7 WOKI radio station locally here in Knoxville, Tennessee, streaming 6 to 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time at Newstalk987.com. Also available in the iHeartRadio app and the News Talk 987 app as well. Also, I don't think I'll be here next week because uh, I'm going to go on vacation as well. Um, not to Disneyland. I'm just going to Chicago. So, you know, there's that. Chicago is my kind of town. Go Cubs go. Um, yep, that's right. It's going to be a monorail solo show next week. Uh, Han Solo won't be here, but Justin Monorail will be solo. So, uh, we'll keep it exciting. I don't know. I might, I might reach out to see if we can get a guest star to make an appearance or two. I tried to talk May into coming into the show today and share her excitement about the D23 announcements. And it was a flat no. (laughs) I I can't, I cannot get her back on the show. I know people want to hear from Chicken Nugget, but just know she's doing well. And you should be used to May excited. telling you no. At this she point could. In your life. I, I, I am. She she could have at least come on because I know she participated in the Fortnite D twenty three uh show event, and she could have come and talk about that, but no, didn't want to. So whatever, that's fine. She loves you guys, and uh, and we love you too. Thanks so much for coming and listening to another episode of the Monday Morning Monorail Podcast. Make sure that you check out our YouTube if you want to see the video. Tell your friends. Be good neighbors. And, uh, you know, just to keep on keeping the good vibes going that we got from this exciting D23 weekend. Until we talk next week, or at least you talk to me, thank a team member, thank a cast member, be excellent to each other, and party on, dudes. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Okay, bye-bye.